Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me? Well, our brand new film dropped today, and yesterday the mighty West Ham beat high-flying and undefeated Liverpool. So imagine your best day and double it. Uh, right, before I get ahead of myself, um, let's roll the intro and get this show proper on the road. <laughs> Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Monday, the 8th of November, and as that remarkably persistent guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, the opposite of Turkish delight. JCB has bagged a top environmental award. Off your trolley. And what if demolition just stopped? Uh, we're also going to give you a heads up on a brand new Demolition Book 2. We'll get to all of that in just a second. But first, let's begin with a look at who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating a birthday on this day of days. And it's many happy returns to Vlad the Impaler, thought to be the inspiration for the character Count Dracula. And spookily enough, um, it is also the birthday of Bram Stoker, the man who actually wrote Dracula. Weird. Um, to, happy birthday also to Edmund Halley, the guy with the comet, to singer and comedian Ken Dodd, and to former West Ham player and World Cup winner Martin Peters, to wizard frontman Roy Wood, and to Richard Curtis, the writer behind Four Weddings and a Funeral. Um, and to sweary chef Gordon Ramsay, and to another West Ham star, Mr. Joe Cole. Many happy returns to them, one and all. Now, this is not how I wanted to start the week, but I have a film to show you. It's not pretty, uh, far from it, in fact. But if lessons are to be learned from other people's incidents, accidents and mishaps, then this surely belongs in the public domain. Uh, my, apology in, is it, my apologies in advance, rather, for the fact that the film is in vertical format. Unfortunately, that's how it was shot. But I don't think that detracts from the impact of the film. Now, just so you know, I have actually reached out to the person that sent me the video, which I'm assured originates in Turkey. Uh, so far, there's no words on the condition of the operator. However, having watched it several times, I'm pretty sure he walks away, even though it's hard to tell because it's obscured by a passing car. Either way, I don't think he'll be doing that again anytime soon. So, first thing this morning, we dropped a brand new film called What If Demolition Stopped? The film looks at what could happen if the proposed environmental and planning shackles are applied to the UK demolition industry. It also draws a comparison between the demolition industry of today and the seemingly invincible coal, uh, UK coal industry of the 1970s. Here is just a clip. A desire to meet environmental targets set in place the Large Combustion Plant Directive that effectively rendered the UK's fossil fuel power stations obsolete. Without demand from the power stations, coal consumption fell from 157 million tonnes per year at its peak to just 18 million tonnes in 2016. As a result, 
the UK coal companies withered and died as power stations switched to alternative fuel sources or just closed entirely. In 1920, the UK coal mining industry employed more than a million people. By 1976, with the advent of mechanisation, that figure was just a quarter of a million. By 2015, the UK coal industry employed just 2,000 people. All of that took place in a period of just 30 years. Coincidentally, the UK is aiming to become a net zero nation in exactly the same time frame. And the similarities between the coal sector then and the demolition sector now do not end there. Although a need to safeguard the environment formed the battleground for coal's last stand, the weapon of choice deployed against the industry was planning. Make no mistake, the UK still has viable coal deposits, but with the spectre of environmental controls hanging over the industry, planning permission to work those deposits became harder and harder to obtain. Compare that to the calls now for the carbon emission implications of any new demolition or construction as a prerequisite to planning permission, and it's clear that the weapon that ultimately beat to death coal could so easily be turned upon demolition. And if anything, the UK demolition industry is even more vulnerable to such an attack. The coal industry was huge and hugely influential. In fact, it was so powerful that in 1984 and 1985, it went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Margaret Thatcher's government in a brutal strike against colliery closures. Coal lost, but it was big enough and powerful enough to bloody the nose of an especially powerful UK government. The demolition industry carries no such heft and no such influence. Now, you can watch the full-length film over at demolitionnews.com right now. I will be posting it on uh, Facebook and on LinkedIn um, probably about 11, 11.30 today. So um, please take a look. I, I have to say I'm quite proud of the film, and I'd really love to hear what you all think as well. Axsoft and Svantec are your high-end partners for noise, vibration, dust, and air quality systems, sensors, and software. To find out more, visit axsoft.co.uk or call 01234 639 550. Now, JCB's hydrogen engine has won one of the oldest and most prestigious awards in British automotive engineering. At a ceremony in London, JCB chairman Lord Bamford was presented with the Royal Automobile Club uh, the Royal Automobile Club's Dewar Trophy for the company's development of a hydro hydrogen fuel motor. It's the third time that JCB's innovations have been honoured with the Dewar Trophy. Uh, trophy rather. Uh, John Wood, MBE, Chairman of the Dewar Technical Committee, said JCB has been a pioneer in terms of powertrain development since it started building its own engines in 2004. That ethos has continued with its latest hydrogen fueled engines, which are an inspiring combination of current expertise and next generation technology. Uh, Anthony Bamford, who is pictured there, said, we are extremely proud that the Royal Automobile Club has has chosen to present JCB with the Dewar Trophy for a third time. Our new hydrogen fueled engines can be put into production relatively quickly, and it's an important and, and pioneering step towards a zero carbon future and testament to the amazing abilities of our British engineers. JCB's purpose engineered zero uh, CO2 hydrogen fuel motor was designed after a challenge to the company's engineers from Anthony Bamford. Uh, the company is also investing £100 million in the new project and has two prototype hydrogen fuel machines on test, a Baco loader and a, tel a Lodal telescopic handler, both of which we've actually featured here previously. The Miller GT series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting-edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety, machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. The Kansanshi mine in Zambia is the largest copper mine in Africa. To increase levels of productivity and reduce running costs, Hitachi was chosen as the preferred supplier of trolley trucks. And now a new pair of EH3, uh, 3500AC-3s have been added to the Hitachi fleet and are being utilised to support mining, the mining operation. 
that includes the production of more than 120,000 ounces of gold a year and 240,000 tonnes of copper. So, with that in mind, copper load of this. Kansanshi Mine in the northwestern province of Zambia is the largest copper mine in Africa and the eighth largest in the world. It has 1,700 employees and is owned and operated by Kansanshi Mining PLC. The majority shareholding of 80% is held by a Canadian mining and exploration company, First Quantum Minerals. From an initial production capacity, of 110,000 tons of copper in 2005, it is now capable of producing 240,000 tons of copper and more than 120,000 ounces of gold annually. Hitachi mining machines are supporting this development and are at the forefront of new and existing operations. First, Quantum Minerals employs a fleet of EX hydraulic excavators and EH rigid dump trucks including two new EH3500 AC-3s, incorporating trolley technology that were commissioned in December 2016. Two EH3500 AC-3 trolley trucks were delivered to Consanchi Mine at the end of 2016. This model is a whole new approach to the dump truck market and presents great opportunities for Hitachi and its customers. The biggest challenges are to increase productivity and reduce running costs, which is why Hitachi has been selected as the preferred supplier for the Hitachi trolley trucks. The EH3500 AC-3 is a diesel-electric truck that enables a secondary means of powering the wheel motors. It is easy to change from trolley to diesel or vice versa with a flick of a switch. When this is activated, diesel-generated power is cancelled and overhead catenary power is connected and diverted to the wheel motors through inverters and trolley switch box. All of the trolley related parts on the EH3500 AC-3 are produced by Hitachi. These are highly efficient, fully supported by the manufacturer and have a long life expectancy. The biggest advantages are improvements in productivity and um, cost savings. There is also a lower risk of downtime as they don't have a transmission or other complex components. The fuel consumption is approximately 90% lower than diesel mode with low cost electric power for better economy and reduced running costs. When uh, the trucks are under the trolley, we're doubling the speed that they would have done up the ramp. So it's a, it's a big time saver and a big money saver. This is because the engine RPM on the Hitachi truck in trolley mode is lower than any competitor's diesel electric machines or conventional diesel trucks. With the lower duty cycle, the life of the EH3500 AC-3's engine will be longer and there will be less downtime and running costs due to the infrequency of engine rebuilding. It is also more environmentally friendly with lower exhaust emissions and engine noise. The EH3500 AC3 not only meets first quantum minerals expectations, but it has also delivered what the mine needs in terms of payload and speed on the trolley line. It's all about productivity and saving costs, and as some of the trucks are getting near the end of their lifespan, the mine will certainly be looking to the future with Hitachi trolley trucks. Obviously, we don't normally stray into the field of mining, but I think you'll agree that film was well worth it. Now, if you've been following Demolition News for any length of time, you might recall that back in those heady pre-COVID, pre-Brexit days of 2016, we produced a book called A Sight for Sore Eyes. 
That book was an anthology, a collection of my articles, essays, opinion pieces and leader columns drawn from Demolition News and a number of other platforms. Uh, much to my surprise and delight, uh, the book proved to be remarkably popular, uh, so much so that it actually required not one but two reprints. In fact, it was so popular that I promised myself that I would do a new one each year. Fast forward almost six years. And I finally got round to it. Uh, the new edition, A Sight for Sore Eyes, uh, and that's a site spell S-I-T-E, if you see what I did there. Um, the new one is now compiled and written, A Sight for Sore Eyes, number two. Uh, I've also seen an outline for the front cover, which looks great. And the book is now with our designer. Uh, the design process and the process of getting the book published on Amazon will probably take a week or two, but I'm assured the new book will be available uh, for sale in time for Christmas. Now, my plan is to do a very quick snapshot, or actually a series of very quick snapshot films um, for our members-only platform to keep our patrons informed of the uh, progress of the book. And each of our uh, members will also receive a free and a signed copy of the book too. Uh, for everyone else, the book should be available to buy on Amazon by the end of this month, all things being equal. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or, better still, share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Right, that pretty much wraps up today's show, but just a couple of things before I let you get back to the day job. Uh, don't forget that on Wednesday evening, uh, day after tomorrow, we will be bringing you the latest site equipment show sponsored by the fine folks at Xwatch Safety Solutions. That show will start at 6pm sharp on Wednesday, and it will include some prize giveaways, so be on standby for that. Uh, in addition to that, I am planning to produce a short film today that explains the origins of our new book, uh, which is in the design process I just mentioned a, a few moments ago. Uh, but that film will actually be available only to our members-only platform. And, of course, I'll be back here tomorrow for yet more of this old stuff and nonsense. Uh, I'll roll the outro in just a second before leaping gazelle-like over into the chat to see what you're all saying for yourselves. But until then, stay safe, look after yourself, your family, your friends, and your colleagues. Have a great day, and thanks for being here.